Hey everyone, this is Zephyr, and welcome to the BaileyWiki channel, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. We also make modular systems and scenes for Foundry Virtual Tabletop that you can use without any setup. And our latest release for Foundry VTT is going to be the backdrop for this video of Foundry Basics. Today on Foundry Basics, we're going to be covering adventure compendiums, how they work and why you might want to use them. Adventure compendiums are a special type of compendium where you can store data for a adventure, one shot, setting, whatever you would like, that is going to preserve the linking behavior between various entities within Foundry VTT. In this way, you can make sure that your actors, journal notes, etc., on a scene will be preserved and you're not going to have any broken link issues. When you open up that journal entry, you're going to be able to see any entities that you referenced in that, and you have a nice, easy way to bring in all that content all at once, whether that's to reset a world to be able to run the same adventure again, or prepare content ahead of time for your party. This also dovetails beautifully with modules and making your own modules that we covered in an earlier episode of Foundry Basics. With all that said, let's go ahead and dive into how exactly you create adventures and some of their applications. To get started with creating an adventure, you first need to actually build the content for an adventure within your world. I have a collection of different scenes that I put together from the latest BaileyWiki release here. And on them, I have added some tokens, whether those are NPCs or enemies or even player tokens. Some of them, I also have some hidden enemies, such as this shambling mound up here. And I also have these map notes that are journal entries that can be viewed to see what scene they belong to and also a little bit of information. Obviously, if I was making this as a full and proper adventure, I would flesh this out significantly more, but this is to demonstrate things. Now, as you may know, if you were to put this into a compendium and then bring it back out later, then these links could very likely be broken for you, especially if you delete the original items or you make copies and then delete the originals, etc. There's a lot of different ways that you can end up inadvertently changing the IDs of these pieces that if you just stuck them into a regular compendium, you would break those links. But once you have created all of those, the simple solution for being able to connect everything back together nice and neatly is to use an adventure compendium. To create an adventure compendium, you're going to go to your compendiums directory and then select create compendium. And here we'll just title it something like a example local adventure. I'm saying local because this is going to be just in our world here. And we'll go ahead and specify the adventure type. Then when we create it, we can open this up and you'll see we have an empty adventure here. Clicking create adventure is going to give you this really nice section here. So we can do sample adventure name or whatever you want. And then you can also add a banner image here. And then you can add a caption and any kind of description. Finally, you have the sort order here, and the sort order is going to determine where it's going to be compared to other adventures within the same folder or compendium here. Then we'll go over to the contents tab, and this is super easy. You're simply going to drag all of the content that you want to include here. So I have this folder with all of my scenes. I've also created a folder that has all of my enemies, NPCs, and a player character here. And I even have a small selection of items and those journal entries. You can do this with any type of content. You can add in roll tables, card stacks, playlists, etc. You can put them all in here and they all work the same. You just drag and drop it and you can be as detailed or as minimalistic as you want on this. Then when you're ready, you'll select build adventure and it now has been successfully created. You'll notice that our banner image is over here. We open up, we have the banner with our little caption and the overview, and it tells us all of the contents here. And you have the option here to import the adventure. So you'll notice if we do that, it's going to say that it's detecting some of the content that already exists in our world. 
How adventures work and how Foundry works in general is an ID system. Every scene, actor, item, journal entry, what have you, has its own unique identifier assigned to it. This is to make sure that you don't accidentally have multiple types of data fighting each other, etc. It's also how you can make sure that you overwrite things and you have the exact same copies of everything. And so if we do this and we import this content, it's going to not actually give us new things, it's going to rewrite the old things. If we go ahead and say yes, it's going to import a bit, and then we are back to this page. This is technically the same scene, but slightly different now that we've reloaded it. So if you want to make adjustments to your adventure once you have built it, for example, let's go ahead and pop over to this docs warehouse scene that I have, and I want to add a, another entity here, so some other actor. I can then throw in a iron golem, maybe there's an iron golem attacking everyone at the docks. Then I can go back to my compendium, which I still have open here, but again, we can go to it by going to our compendium packs and then we can just find it in there. Then in the compendium itself, we'll right click on our adventure and there's this option for rebuild adventure. And this is going to use all of the same information that we already had and we already have the contents and if we say build adventure it's going to update this scene as another example here we'll go ahead and write some new bits in here just to demonstrate that it's going to save across everything and it's going to update everything so now when we hit build adventure this is going to update all of the content in the adventure based on the things that are in our world so this is how you can make those updates in the future Additionally, you can add more content by just simply dragging and dropping it in here. For example, if I wanted to bring in Illyria, you'll see it shows up as green because it's new. Uh, I don't actually want to include that, but just as an example. Then we'll go ahead and hit Build Adventure again. And we're going to rebuild here. And so now, if I go ahead and open this, I can then import that adventure again. And we're back to the scene that's kept our changes. Now, why would you want to put this into a compendium? Say you're using the same world for a one-shot frequently. This is your one-shot world where basically the only thing you're swapping out is when there's new player characters, but you want to be able to reset. This is so you can prep your entire adventure or your short campaign or your one-shot with all of the maps, all of the items, journal entries, NPCs, what have you that you need, and then you can bring it in at the beginning state rather than having to fi figure out, oh, do I need to reset this? Do we need to reset that? Instead, you build it at the start position, you build an adventure, and then you can re-import it and get everything back. So it's as simple as just deleting this, or if, say, we've already done this combat encounter, things have been changed, etc., we can go ahead and delete any of the uh, fallen combatants here. You know, this is after there's already been a battle, etc., and your players have completely finished this campaign, you're ready for the next group of people who's gonna use this same one shot. You can go ahead and go to your adventure again, and then we just re-import the adventure, and we have completely reset. This is also really nice if you're trying to prep specific modules. For example, you uh, have this section here where we're kind of divided into three areas. We've got the countryside, the city, and the seaside. So maybe we're prepping everything for the seaside here. We've got everything ready to go for this. And say you have a series of maps that you're going to be using for the seaside and for these different battles and encounters and sessions that you're going to be doing with your players, but you don't need them yet. You're just kind of working ahead of the game. You know that there's a good chance that they're going to come to this place and that there will be these kinds of enemies here. But you don't necessarily want them cluttering up your world. Well, this is also a great way to save on some storage space within your world while still maintaining all of your prep. I prepped this entire adventure right here. I can go ahead and actually delete everything. Well, we'll keep one piece here, but I can go ahead and delete everything that's in the folders I don't want. We'll go back to this outer district gate. We'll say we start there. I can delete everything in the countryside and seaside and the only actor I actually have in here is this Gomer the Adventurer. And if we delete all of these things, we don't need them, they're not cluttering up our world. We go ahead and go into example local module here, or local adventure rather, and we re-import our adventure. We have overwritten the scene that we're currently on, but then all of our pieces are back. Even though we deleted everything, it's all completely linked. 
we have our actors, all of our tokens have the same visibility states, and the campsite by the road here, this journal entry still exists, and you'll also notice that all of these links are still working just fine. So everything is working exactly as you would intend it to work if you had just built this and you never put it into a compendium or anything. So this is a great way to preserve all of those nice links and data for your own game. Now, if you are building on multiple servers, for example, maybe this is on your test server, or you want to have kind of a world that is your development type world where you're building your content out that maybe you have different modules enabled or what have you, and then you have a separate world that's where you're actually running your games. This is also where adventure companions can come into play. If you've seen our previous Foundry Basics video on creating modules using the Foundry module widget, you'll be a little bit familiar with the process of creating compendiums. Well, doing those things for an adventure compendium is just as easy, if not even easier, than your regular module creation. I've already created a module here. It's just this example adventure module, and we can see that in my manage modules. And I went ahead and I set up a folder structure here, and we have this example adventure. And to bring in an adventure here, we can either create the adventure, but if I already have one, for example, my example local adventure, I can simply drag it over and it will then import the adventure into this adventure compendium. It is going to take a little bit of time for it to process and then move over, especially if you have a lot of things. And then for safety's sake, I highly suggest you rebuild the adventure once you've created the module. Let's just make sure that everything links properly. It may not strictly be necessary, but it's a good practice to be into. And now that I have this, I can use this wherever I move my module to. And you'll notice that I have all of these other compendiums for journals, etc., and they're completely empty. As an example, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the edit lock here, allowing me to put in some scenes, and I'm just gonna bring in this countryside subfolder specifically, and we'll take a look at how it differs between using the adventure compendium and using the just regular scene import and how these links can cause issues. So with that, I'm gonna take a quick break as I switch to a different world and we'll show this off. So here we are in the other world I've set up. If I go into my manage modules, you can see that I have this example adventure module turned on. And if I go to my compendiums, I have all the compendium content here. I've gone ahead and exported those scenes and also the journal entries here just as a demonstration. Now, something that you'll notice, if I go ahead and drag that in and drag this folder in, on Foundry v12 at least, if you look at this, it does use the exact same IDs if you drag the folder through. However, if I go ahead and delete the countryside here and I import this scene by itself, and I go to look at this campsite by the road here, it is giving me a bad link. And that's because this has a new ID. There's different behaviors that can cause you to keep IDs, but using the direct import, if you're only bringing in a single scene, can cause some issues with that. And guaranteeing that you have the exact same ID can get a little tricky, especially when you get more complicated. And so for that reason, the adventure compendiums is absolutely the preferred method. So I'll go ahead and delete this as well as the journals, and I'll demonstrate what it looks like when we use the adventure importer on a fresh world where we don't have any of those pieces already in. Go ahead and import our adventure. And now we have actually the outer district gate as our active scene. You can double click on Gomer here, and we've got his full character sheet. We have all of our actors and enemies in here in our journal entries that are completely fine and set up here. We can even go through and take a look at them individually. You can see that we have our enemy in place. And here we have all of the fellows in place. Now what's important to note with the adventure compendium here, unless I have all of these compendiums, but I don't actually have to have anything within the actors compendium or the items compendium or the scenes compendium even in order for it to all pull in. We have every single scene, every single actor, every single journal entry, etc., ready to go at our fingertips just by having this one compendium in our module. 
So it's super easy to deliver a lot of content if you're building out adventure modules, one shots, what have you, using just the adventure type of compendium. You can of course include these scene and actor, et cetera, compendiums to make sure that if people want just that at a particular moment, that they have access to it. But if you only wanted to bring in, say the actors, we could go ahead and delete this and we can clear out say journal entries as well. If we go into the adventure here and we go to import it, we can uncheck this import all and we can just select the actors and import that part of the adventure. And we have all of our actors back, but we didn't import the journal entries. So you can see that our actors are linked just fine. But if we go to say the country road here, our journal entry is going to go nowhere. And if someone wanted to bring that in later, then they of course could as well. So this is a pretty flexible delivery mechanism here. And you may have to refresh once you have the journal entries, but then you have it right here because it's linked via ID and we have everything back in here. So you can use the adventure compendiums to either bring in a full adventure, one shot setting, what have you, ready to go for you on another server or to distribute content if you are looking to share your creations with the Foundry VTT community. It's a really fantastic way to prep ahead of time and keep things stored in nice, neat bundles. It is especially useful if you are using the same adventure or setting or one shot for multiple groups of players. It gives you an incredibly easy little restart point to be able to get up off the ground quickly and easily and not have to replicate prep every time or worry about different links being broken, etc. And it's also again, super easy to update. All you have to do is make the changes to the versions that you've brought in with the importer and rebuild it and then it's ready to go. That's going to conclude this episode of Foundry Basics on Adventures. I hope that this has helped to clear up any confusion and answered any questions that you may have had about adventure compendiums. In the comments, please let us know what you're going to be using adventure compendiums for. Are you going to be using them to streamline your prep sessions? Do you run multiple different groups that you need to reset for and this will be helpful for? Or are you planning on distributing adventures and content to the people in the Foundry VTT community at large? Once again, this has been Zephyr with the Bailiwiki channel. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to keep up with all of our latest content and consider becoming a patron. Not only do you support the channel, but you'll also gain access to all of the modular systems and scenes that we've created, including the ones that you've seen in the background of the video today. This has been Zephyr. Thank you so much for watching. Happy gaming and have a good one.